athletes. Why should you? Why not? Personally, I think it's a waste of fucking time. It's a waste of fucking time for me because... And I honestly, like... I know everybody has their ways and stuff, but... You can get the same results with such easier means. I don't know why anybody fucking does it. You know, I, I, fuck. You know, the athletes... The athletes I've talked to don't like it because it's a fucking pain in the ass to learn. It's very rare that the athletes perform it correctly so that it's getting the training stimulus that everybody says that it's doing. That's a big fucking... That's something I hate. I fucking hate when a coach says, oh, we do this, this, and this because we want to achieve that, that, and that. And then you watch the movements and they're so shitty that there's no way they're getting that, that, and that. That shit drives me nuts. Like, if you're a coach and you say, uh, we squat to stimulate glutes and hamstrings, and then you watch their athletes squat, and it's a fucking close stance, knees in, quarter squat, guess what? You ain't fucking training glutes and hamstrings. So that's, I just, we, when I was coaching, we always had great results without it. Anytime we put it in, um, you know, I coached my ass off on it. The kids look, their their movements got better. They did a better job with it over the semester. And then when we tested at the end of the semester, the results weren't anything spectacular. So if I'm going to go cut down a tree, I'm going to use a chainsaw, not a fucking steak knife. Be efficient in my training. Does it make sense to use jumps and or throws as the main lifts on dynamic effort day? Maybe, but very rarely because uh, jumps and throws train a different area and a different strength trait than dynamic work does. I know we talk about it kind of generically, like speed work or whatever, but um, if you look at the force velocity curve and the traits that are trained along that curve, Jumps and throws are more explosive strength. No, <laughs> I'm being an asshole. Uh, no, so it trains different things. But, you know, there might be an in-season situation or very beginner situation where that might work for who the population you're working with. But in general, I would I would train both of those things because you're, you're going after different traits, which I think are both very important. Uh, what I... What I've more commonly done is take the jumps and throws out in season because the athletes get enough of that shit in their practice. So we'll do we'll take the jumps and throws out in season and then do speed work because that's the type of stimulus they're not getting. In football or just try stronger? Uh, both. You know, you, in all honesty, you could have your linemen lift pretty much the same as your receivers. Um, with a few variations here and there, right? But you also, there's a lot of things you can do to kind of help the training and help each of those groups if you make some tweaks. The problem with that idea or either one of those is if you do just like anything else, if you take it too far and go <clears throat> too too far on one side of it. So if you're gonna make your total, your whole program sports specific in the weight room, there's probably something wrong with it. Or if you're just, you know, if you just do, if you're gonna get them stronger so you just run five sets of five all the time on everything. That would be going too far the other way. You know, you got to make tweaks here and there. But there's no reason you can't go kind of <clears throat> cover both of those bases. So my answer would be both. How's that for? How's that for a French answer? Or Swiss? Swiss? I don't fucking know. I obviously have paid attention to the industry.
So yeah, do both. Like for example, I had um, our um, I had our our top thrower and one of our top pole vaulters. Male thrower was a male. Uh, pole vaulter was a female. They basically did the same program. Um, lifted four days a week. Did a conjugate model. Uh, <clears throat> we're both pretty good lifters, so they could handle all the shit I was throwing at them. The only difference was the thrower had more volume, less jumps. Um, and the pole vaulter did a little more mobility stuff. And they're both really good and both pretty healthy. So you don't have to. If you, if you can run the weight room right... Um, you can get away without having to write a fucking individualized program for everybody. It's, it's not. The, the, the big, you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck increase in horsepower. Okay? So that's not just getting stronger. That's getting more explosive, too. So you got to train that. If you use a conjugate model, you'll take care of all that shit. If you use a conjugate model and get the kids training well and moving well on the main movements, same thing. I don't know what the fuck's going on with the sunlight right now. Um, so, that'd be my answer. Put some put some small variations in. I think you, now, when you get into the conditioning, that's where you're going to start to differentiate more. Because a different position probably requires uh, different energy systems and different, you know, like alignment it is going to be more strength-based where a receiver is going to have a lot more yardage they got to cover and stuff during a game. Functional. Interested to hear your thoughts on this functional training, i.e. boil. Every fucking thing is functional. Anything you do in a weight room is functional. They, so it's... Physical therapy takes these terms and throws it on different types of training or different modalities. And then the strength and conditioning field grabs a hold of them and just fucking bastardizes them. And tries to set themselves apart by naming this, okay? So this is what happened with core. Back in the early 2000s, when you first started hearing about core, and some of you don't even realize this because you weren't alive and core is probably cool again, but... Uh, yeah, like you heard core and you're like, oh, that makes sense, you know, talking about training my whatever. And then it's like a bad song. Everybody gets it, just fucking uses it too much. And, uh, like it's like Nickelback, it turns into a bad fucking song. People bastardize it and fuck it up, and then it gets a bad rap. So, I like box squats for all athletes. I don't give a fuck what sport. Give a fuck 